main goal of this team and the main goal of this program is do everything what we can in terms of planning and preparation to win Tour de France. Lance, we're going with the car to uh, until where you can ride to prepare your clothes and some tea and stuff. Okay. Okay? What if I keep going? You can't. Huh? You cannot. Three meters of snow. On the side. The guy says you can there's no way you can ride. There's no way. Who says that? Welcome to the video. It's getting cold here in Adelaide, Australia. This is a uh, Lance Armstrong video. This is from Humboldt Redwoods in 2006. I did a half marathon there. Let's talk about Lance Armstrong. I did a documentary the other day. I should say I uploaded a documentary the other day. And uh, people haven't seen it. It's called Road to Paris. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a fantastic documentary. You know, fantastic doco. Check it out. Is it a big Nike uh, propaganda? Yeah. You know. Is it, uh, you know, full of cliches and stuff? Yeah. Was it totally epic? And is it still epic today to watch? Yeah. You know? Did it enhance the fairy tale image of Lance? Yeah. Was it? It's just, go watch it. It's on my channel, Road to Paris. Uh, or just type in Lance Armstrong documentary on my channel in the search bar. It is an epic. Let me just lower this uh, tripod a bit. It is an epic, epic, epic documentary. That's cold. It's come out from Mount Lofty. Did ride mate Corbin. From New Zealand, and uh, there's nothing better. I oh, there is think few things better, but one of the best things you can ever do is ride your bike up a mountain in the cold air, and then come back down in the rain. It makes you feel alive, right? Just take it easy on the downhill. So here we have a Trek bike, right? This is a seven series OCLV. It says on there it says hand built in the United States, right? So this is like. An 824 gram frame, I think it's like a 56. It's, it's incredible. You know what's going on now with Trek and carbon fiber, etc. Trek wouldn't be here today without Lance Armstrong. Let's just be real. People are like, oh, yeah, how, how dare you support Lance Armstrong? You know, blah, blah, blah. I've always been a Lance fan, even back in 1999. So this is me just trying to social climb, or whatever. You know, back in 99, I was like, Lance is doping, 100%. People are like, oh, you're just angry, you're jealous, you're a hater. And I'm like, I ain't a hater. I'm a fan of Lance. I, just, I love watching this. Is, Lance has brought some sort of panache and Americanisms or whatever to Tour de France. It was just epic. You know, it was just epic. And then the just the blue, white, and red Trek 5500 frames. And, man, we all frothed over that stuff back in the 90s, you know, and still today. So, you know, I've always been a Lance fan. And I always knew that he was juicing. And the amount of ar arguments and debates... I've had a big banana smoothie here. <coughs> Let me have a sip, my throat's a bit dry. The amount of arguments I used to have with people, you know, they'd be like, do you think Lance is clean? I said, God, he's just, he's juiced as it gets, you know? He's as juiced as everyone else is. In every sport, it ain't just cycling, it's soccer, it's UFC, it's kickboxing, you know? It, it's all the sports, man. Running, swimming, Instagram, bodybuilding. People are taking steroids to sell ebooks to get swole, to sell ebooks to teenagers on Instagram. So if you, th you think if you think Lance Armstrong is the, the most sophisticated doping network in the history, like come on, man. that's Travis Tiger. <sighs> Travis Tiger now works for the UFC. Which, if you want to see what steroids do to bodies, go to the UFC. All right, Nate Diaz. Everybody's on steroids. I agree. The fact that Travis Tiger works for UFC in USADA. And you got, you, got, you got women in the UFC who look like Barry Bonds. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've got nothing, I've got nothing wrong with people taking steroids. I understand what professional athletes lie about it. I get that. My issue is when people on Instagram take steroids, build a physique, you know, stand out for physique and go, I'm natural. You know, I'm natural. So come on, man. Athlete X, you ain't natty. Anyway, so I support Lance Armstrong. I always have, always will. Because he made cycling what cycling is today. And I love cycling. I'm a cycling geek. I'm 42. I've never had a driver's license. 
and I worked in the shop uh, back in the day, and we sold track bikes, and I sold so many bikes. I made my boss a lot of money because of Lance Armstrong, you know? And then the new, the new catalogs would come in, and be, oh, yeah, be frothing over it, and it's just, Lance made people rich. He made my boss at the time rich. Trek, we just, they just, they sold themselves. I'm a mouth of the South, you know? I can sell ice, the Eskimos pretty much. But these Trek bikes, people people came into the shop, and they knew what they wanted. I want that, I want that 5900, I want that 5200, I want that, I'll take, I want, I want the Dura Group set, I want the Rolf, I want the Mount Seriums, I want this, I want that. I want the Lance jersey. I want the Berry Floors 2003 kit. You know, it, it just, it sold itself. You know, all I had to do was take the credit card, take the cash, put it through the till, hand the product over, that was it. I didn't have to do a sales bill, they just like, Phew. Lance triggered people's emotions like no one else ever has in sport, in my opinion. You know, there will never be another Lance Armstrong. We, we've had the best in terms of ambassador for the sport. He is, we've got Peter Sagan. We've got to mention Peter Sagan. Cannondale. All right, this is Sagan special, super light, 795 gram frame, BB30, actually, it's a press fit 30, this one, I reckon. But, uh, you yeah, know, so this is Sagan special. You know, Peter Sagan would not be here today without Lance Armstrong. Cannondale wouldn't be here, you know. Uh, the Cannondale team wouldn't be here. Jonathan Vowders wouldn't be here. Jonathan Vowders got his frame from riding the Lance Armstrong train. So, so everyone did. Cannondale used to make alloy bikes hand-built in the United States. And then it got crushed because everyone's like, we need carbon. And Trek Carbon just like, Bruh! and then Giant did the carbon one, even though they'd tried to do it back in the 90s, no one really cared. But as soon as Lance Armstrong won, carbon became king. Carbon was like the, why would you make a bike out of carbon material? You know? And then once Lance won, and then in 2000, and 2001, and 2002, and 2003, but it took them four years for all the other brands to go, okay, we're gonna do carbon. And by 2005, Lance's last victory Everyone's riding carbon to a France. But in 1999, you know, it was alloy. It was alloy bikes. And so the carbon bike was a bit like weird. But then Lance just made carbon what it is today. So without Lance Armstrong, we wouldn't have the Peter Sagan Special, some Specialize. Specialize was a no brand in 1999. Like it was an American mountain bike brand that sponsored Festina with their Alay S Works uh, M4 M5 material bike with that, you know, that swanky aero seat trip no one cared about. No one cared about Specialized back then, you know? Lance made Specialized even. He, he, he just made cycling a US sport, a consumer sport, you know, like a collectible sport. Before that, it was like a bit of classic Italian steel, that's about it. So Lance made the cycling industry. You walk into any bike shop anywhere in the world today, there'll be a Lance Armstrong effect in that shop. Except for maybe some toy shop in China or whatever. So it was bikes. But man, you walk... You walk around, I remember living in Thailand for the last 15 years, every year go there, and it, there used to be like posters like the size of the wall with Lance Armstrong. And then when he came clean in 2012, whoosh, people ripped him down. Some people still kept him up, because I understand what's going on. But Nike ditched Lance, Trek ditched Lance, Bristol Myers Squibb, everyone ditched Lance pretty much. All the people that made millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions, maybe some, they made, they made bank off Lance, and as soon as the truth came out, but they knew all along. But as soon as, as, soon as Lance and I did on, on Oprah, they were like, uh oh, social narrative's changing. See you, Lance. Lance Armstrong is just a pawn. He's a puppet. I don't, I don't say that in a bad way, I'm just saying that people, all the hate goes to Lance. What are all those brands that made so much money off Lance's name and doping? and training, etc., and genetics, and everything. The Lance effect. What about all those brands? What about Nike? How much money did they lose? Lance, zero. How much money did they lose? Lance lost money. I think he did a really you know, bad thing by not giving Floyd Landers a thrower. You know, he could have given Floyd a land as a hand, just as a bike clip, anything. And Floyd felt rejected because Lance was like an older brother to him. Floyd felt rejected. This is my personal opinion. I could be wrong. But Floyd felt rejected by Lance, who he saw as like a god. And then your god's like giving you the cold shoulder. You're like, well, I could probably take you down. And I'm probably going to do that. And he did that, you know. <laughs> so, you know, that was that was bad. So Lance definitely made some mistakes uh, with dealing with people. People say he destroyed people's careers. I don't know if anyone's career Lance destroyed. He made everyone. He got money. Even Floyd got money. 
before, during, and after Lance Floyd got money. Everyone got money from Lance. Even the, the that guy Walsh, um, the journo, he got money from Lance. Like everyone got money from Lance, man. <laughs> like Lance was like the golden egg. The golden goose, rather. And then people like took him out and I'm just like, oh you idiots, you idiots. All top level sports are juicing, right? They always have been, they always will be. Because people want winners. Winners get paid and laid. Sponsors want to be associated with winners. Even today, Trek. This is the Madone. The latest Madone just won the World Championships, Mads Pedersen. So the Trek Madone, that name still lives on. That was introduced by Lance. Do you know how much a, a, the latest <laughs> the latest model Madone sells for? It's like 15 grand or 10 grand or some crazy price tag. Trek Madone. Trek Madone. These are the words Lance made famous. The Madone, correct from wrong, but it's the name of a climb near Nice in France. And it was Dr. Ferrari who was Lance's coach. And he would tell Lance to do time trials, just like I coach my athletes doing weekly time trials or fortnight time trials. So the Madone was the climb where Lance knew if he could do a certain time, maybe around the 30-minute mark, then he could win the Tour de France. You know, he'd win the Tour de France. And when so he'd do these times, he'd be like, okay. So then they named the, the, the bike after the Madone. You know? So the Madone is, refers to the, the climb that one of the most successful doctors, doping doctors, sports doctors in the world, who was a gynecologist, Dr. Ferrari. He said, Lance, the Madone's good, it's 30 minutes, it's about, you know, climbs the Tour de France, about 30 minutes, give or take. Do the Madone, Let's see what you can do up there. So that was like the, that's like the, you know, that's like the test and how good the drugs are working. The Madone is like the, the litmus test for your form. And so we still use that word today, Madone. Now it's like a barrister's sprint, sprinter sort of, you know, bike, aero. It's like the Homer Simpson, um, what's that car they had? Where Homer Simpson had all the features on the car. Now the Madone's like aero, disc brakes, and it's got an ice, uh, ISO speed thing in the back. And it's, yeah, it's cool. But yeah, so that's an example there where people write, Lance Armstrong's bad, sociopath, he's a narcissistic sociopath. Like, who isn't? And who wouldn't be at that level of fame? You know, it, it takes a special level of person to stay humble when you've got that much fame. So that's the deal there. Um, yeah. I knew all along Lance was on the juice. And I had so many debates about it. I'm going to repeat myself. I had so many debates about it. People like, you just a hater. And all those people who had those debates, none of them have said 10 years later, oh, hell, you were right. You were right all along. I'm sorry for like, doesn't matter. Lance Armstrong, yeah, he made cycling what it was. He's just a pawn, man. He's just a pawn. He got exploited so hardcore. All those, who, who gave him the drugs? Who made the money? You know, everybody made, everybody, if you were, every, everyone made money from Lance. Travis Tigart made money from Lance. The lawyers, everybody, just like it, Lance was like a big whale going to a strip club, and everyone's just like grabbing a bit of money from him. You know what I mean? Everywhere it goes, everyone's just grabbing. Yeah, that's the reality. There, people are still making money from Lance. I'm still making money from Lance. Crazy. So, anyone's ever going to be a hater from Lance? Then, you know, you, you must be a little bit. Doo. I find Lance Armstrong to wrap up the video. I find Lance Armstrong. His situation, he came from a, correct from wrong, he had a single mum, his dad walked out early, so he had a chip on his shoulder, he felt abandoned and rejected, cycling was his outlet, triathlon, he won, he got fame, he got significance, he got attention, maybe some father figures as well, so it's like the better I get at this, the more this love and association and significance I get. Anyone gets in my way, I'm going to text and I'm going to line back here, you know. And so then he had all these people who would try and, you know, prevent him from getting that fame, which underlying was just from a childhood, you know, lack of love, etc. in my opinion. Or fatherly figures or, or whatever. And you used to be, I'm addicted to it. You used to be, I'm addicted to that level. Can you imagine Lance Armstrong? Can you imagine what it would feel like to have a hemoglobin around 200 and you're smashing, you got one nut, you're mono nut, they call you, and you're smashing up the coals in the Tour de France, and everybody's cheering you. Maybe a couple of French people aren't, but pretty much everyone's cheering you. You know people on their on their seats at home, just go, let yeah, you know what I mean? And he's off your fucking face to smash up these climbs. 
You know, someone hands you a check for a million, like someone's like, you win the lay lands, we're going to give you a bonus or we'll sign you or whatever. You know what I mean? Because everyone knows we're going to make money from Lance. <laughs> it's just like, everyone's behind you pretty much. And then they've got the haters and stuff like that, but they give you even more drive. That's just insane. You know, that social reality. So imagine being like that. And then you're on the Oprah show. And then you've got the, the everyday American who's totally ignorant about pretty much most things in the world. Oh, Lance Armstrong, you a drug shit. <laughs> I watch the NFL instead. I watch the NBA. The NBA's okay. So, yeah, it's, it, I find it just so interesting. Lance is like this big, uh, you know, just confirms how apathetic, ignorant, and gullible society really is. Yeah. And still is today. NFL. There's no drugs in the NFL? There's no drugs in baseball? <laughs> There's no drugs at all, guys. Travis Tiger and his bulldozer came in. Novitski. <laughs> they, they cleaned up sport, guys. We caught Lance Armstrong. Sport's clean, guys. Carry on. We got Lance Armstrong. <laughs> What's Novitski doing today? What's Tiger doing today? Tiger's probably like doing lines of coke off UFC girls' butts. And go, yeah. Dana White, that was some good white. It's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a shit show out there, man. Society is an absolute circus. So if I get one more comment, Lance Armstrong is a cheat. He ruined people's lives. I shall get more comments like that. But yeah, man, just, it's just... People, think a little bit. Think a little bit. Lance Armstrong. Cycling's a beautiful sport. People ride their bikes. It's good for the environment. You can... You know... All those cold, rainy days when I was riding to the tour from the shops back in the 90s. And, and you know, you have these visions of Lance Armstrong in the Tour de France in the rain. And you're thinking you're Lance up the hill. Dance like Lance, spin the wind. You know, <laughs> like it, it gave us, all us bike commuters, a massive amount of, like, emotion and passion. And no haters can do that. You know, none, of, none of his haters could do that. You know, and even some of the cyclists like Dave Browsford, who has done great things as well for cycling, but when Browsford was bagging Lance, I'm like, oh, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing, Browsford? You know? What are you doing? That, that was unexpected. And I think probably Dave regrets doing that, because that's just like, what are you doing? Dave. You know? And, uh, but yeah, just the, the, everything Lance has just changed the game. You can't not see a video of Lance Armstrong on YouTube from back in the day and not have some, like, emotion. If you're a cycling nut. And, and if you don't, then it's probably, you probably don't have a pulse. You probably don't have a, much of a pulse. Anyway, that's the deal. Um, just want to explain it. Some of the people who don't understand the history of cycling, history of pro sport, drugs in sport. It's here. It's epidemic. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. Your teenage kids are probably following some juicer on Instagram who's trying to sell an Athlean X program or whatever. Okay? And that's what I disagree with. All right? I've got no problem people taking drugs. Take all the EPO you want. Go win the Olympics. Whatever. But when you're defrauding kids by saying, I'm clean, you can have a physique like this, buy my program, buy my BCA protein shake. It's like, come on, man. That's a joke. Every barrister who bought a Trek 5900, it's a fat barrister's bike. That's the nickname we had for it. Every fat barrister who bought one of those bikes knew they weren't going to win the Tour de France. No one bought a Trek 5900 thinking, I might win the Tour de France one day. I've got the same bike as Lent. No one did that. There's people out there buying programs thinking, I'm going to look like Athlean X without steroids. If I, you know, I'll get Athlean X results. Athlean X is on steroids. Lance is on steroids. All right? Nick Day 8. Everyone's on steroids. Anyway, kids, that's the deal. You sada. Forget the pro athletes. You sada. Get on the Instagram. Get onto YouTube and clean up all these fake natty dopers. Do something worthwhile for society. Drugs in sport? Who cares? Let them dope. Let them juice. It's entertainment. What's going on over here in the social media world? That's fraud. That's really effed up, man. Right? Who cares? Who cares about UFC drugs and cycling drugs? Who cares, man? It's sport. It's entertainment. We want to see... We want to see crazy shit. Otherwise, we wouldn't watch it. Let them juice. Let them juice. Let them do it safely, without fear. But let's take care of these fake names on social media who are really damaging people's self-esteem by you know, claiming they can have this level of physique without taking juice. And that ain't right. Anyway, people, that's the deal. That's my two cents here down under Australia, Adelaide, Australia. Adelaide, what an amazing time. 
What an amazing time to be alive. So it's Lance, thanks for all the memories. Keep it up. I know you will, because you that's the sort of person you are. Comments down below. We'll see you next video. Peace. Clothes and some tea and stuff. Okay. Okay? What if I keep going? You can't. Huh? You cannot. Three meters of snow. From the side? The guy says you can there's no way you can ride. There's no way. Who says that?